Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman's statement may be a tongue-in-cheek one, but it does throw the spotlight on a subject most contentious. Poll funding in our country. Who funds polls? How much money goes into funding of elections? Some estimate that the 2024 Lok Sabha election could very well be the most expensive poll ever in the history of independent India. Some calculations put a number in excess of $14 billion to fund the polling exercise in the world's largest democracy. During the last winter session of Parliament, Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman presented the initial batch of supplementary demand for grants for the year 23-24 in Lok Sabha. Amongst these allocations was an additional sum of Rs 3,147.92 crores for election-related expenditure and another sum of 73.67 crores for the administration of the election commission. With the scale of general elections expanding to accommodate a burgeoning electorate, an increasing number of parties, candidates, polling booths and constituencies, the costs associated with the electoral process continues to soar. Let's break down the estimated expense per Lok Sabha for you. Cost of organizing Lok Sabha elections undergoing a significant increase over the years. Starting from 10.5 crores in 1951, this cost has now surged to an astronomical 3,870.3 crores just by 2014. Concurrently, India's electorate has expanded substantially, multiplying over five times from 17.32 crores in 1952 to 91.2 crore eligible voters in 2019. This staggering growth in the size of the electorate actually solidifies India's position as the world's largest democracy. Excluding the 1957 general elections, the cost of conducting Lok Sabha elections has witnessed a consistent increase with each subsequent poll. Between the 2009 and 2014 Lok Sabha elections, this expenditure more than trebled, going up from 1,114.4 crores to well over 3,870 crores. In the forthcoming elections, candidates are bound by expenditure limits ranging from 70 lakh rupees to 95 lakh rupees, contingent upon the state from which they are contesting. This ceiling encompasses an entire range of campaign-related expenses, including but not limited to public meetings, rallies, ads, posters, banners, vehicles and promotional activities. Despite these stipulated limits, actual expenditure often surpasses the prescribed boundaries reflecting the competitive nature of electoral politics. The expense for elections are covered by the central government, covering various aspects such as the administrative costs of the election commission, which can include deploying poll workers and armed security personnel, establishing polling booths, procuring electronic voting machines, conducting awareness programs and issuing voter ID cards. However, the election commission has not yet disclosed the actual cost which has been incurred for the 2019 Lok Sabha polls. The process of poll funding unfolds through a series of strategic maneuvers adopted by political parties. In the forthcoming 2024 Lok Sabha elections, candidates are mandated to adhere to prescribed spending limits, which have been outlined by the Election Commission of India. These guidelines aim to foster transparency and fairness in the electoral process while curbing excessive expenditure. Here's a comprehensive breakdown of the maximum amounts candidates can allocate towards their campaigning endeavours. For most states, except Arunachal Pradesh, Goa and Sikkim, in a Lok Sabha constituency, candidates are permitted to spend up to 95 lakh rupees. In an assembly constituency, including the state of Andhra Pradesh, the spending limit stands at 40 lakh rupees per candidate. For Arunachal Pradesh, Goa and Sikkim, at a Lok Sabha level, candidates are again restricted to a maximum limit of 75 lakhs. Whereas for union territories like Delhi and Jammu and Kashmir, candidates can spend up to 95 lakh rupees. In other union territories, this expenditure ceiling has been set at 75 lakh rupees. The expenditure associated with procuring the much talked about electronic voting machines has been on a steady rise right since the conclusion of the 2019 Lok Sabha polls. Electronic voting machines have been utilized in every constituency during general elections since 2004. Notably, in the 23-24 budget, there was a substantial allocation towards procuring and maintaining EVMs. Initially, in the budget, immediately following the election, the center earmarked 25 crores for EVMs. However, in the latest budget, an allocation of 1,891.8 crores 
was made for electronic voting machines, with Finance Minister Sita Raman presenting an additional demand for grants of Rs 611.27 crore during the ongoing winter session of the Parliament. Although the annual budget allocates funding directly to the Election Commission, certain election-related expenses, such as those for electronic voting machines, are accounted for within the Ministry of Law and Justice's budget. The Election Commission's administrative expenses have exhibited a consistent upward trajectory over the years. Notably, the Election Commission's budget has increased from 236.6 crores in the year preceding the 2019 general elections to 340 crores in the 23-24 budget. During the winter session, Nirmala Sitarman presented a supplementary demand for grants totaling up to 73.7 crores for the agency in anticipation of the forthcoming parliamentary polls. According to budget documents, the staff strength of the Election Commission is projected to increase from 591 personnel in 2022 to 855 in 2024. There are two clear-cut verticals under which poll funding takes place. One is the cost ascribed by the central government towards administration and management of costs for the polls, and then there is the cost incurred by political parties and candidates. It's here where the much-talked-about electoral bond scheme comes into play. A total sum of 16,200 crores has been donated by private parties through poll funding mechanism via electoral bonds. There is a raging debate already about companies first facing the IRF investigating agencies and then going to buy electoral bonds to donate either to the party in part of the state or at the centre. Ultimately, post the death of electoral bonds, cash will be back in the system. To imagine a digital India funding our poll expenses, honestly speaking, would really be fooling one's own self.